cookies. They're a ginger cookie that is kind of shaped into the shape of a uh, little hedgehog. We're going to be using flaked almonds for our little quills on the hedgehog. And for the eyes and nose, we're going to use whole cloves. Um, the recipe for this can be found in the, uh, in the, the, comp the description below. But it's pretty much, I mean, I'm using gluten-free, but um, since it's a one-to-one -one baking flour that I'm using, you basically use the same um, amount of flour and everything else in with regular flour. Um, this is a ginger cookie. It's not a ginger snack because they're soft and chewy. Um, but it's going to, it's, so it's going to be a little bit more cake-like. Um, so let's get started. All right, our recipe calls for two cups of flour. And again, while I am using a one-to-one -one baking flour, this time I'm using Bob's Red Mill. I was using cup for cup last time. Different flowers yield different results. And two, make sure you're leveling them off. Okay, so that's two cups of flour. Make sure you close them back up. Get that out of my way. Um, I need baking soda. So we've got our flour here, our salt, um, the baking powder is underneath there. There's your ginger and your cinnamon and your clove. Okay. And then we're, we are going to mix that all together. Just need a nice spoon for that. Mmm. I love those smells. Lovely fall and winter smells. It's my favorite. Okay, I'm going to put these away. Thank you. 
anyways we're going to set this aside for a minute and then we need to put the wet ingredients together okay so we need three quarters of a cup of brown sugar where did i put the brown there's the brown sugar if you don't have a three quarter cup measure what you do is you use half a cup Just like that. And a quarter cup measure. So a half plus a quarter equals three quarters. sugar is kind of a wet sugar. Kind of like Celtic sea salt is kind of a wet salt. It'll cake. Okay, now we need um, three quarters of a cup of butter. So we'll need one stick plus one half. Oh my. And again, I am using the Kerrygold or a European butter because it is a slightly higher fat content. What you'll want to do is cream these together. vanilla. I get vanilla beans and put it in spice rum and let it sit for about, oh, I want to say about three months. It's good and ready. There we go. Making your own vanilla is super easy. to this
kind of sticky. It's a little like treacle. Okay, and one egg at room temperature. and smooth. Scrape your sides. Just like that. Alright, now we're going to combine the two. get it all mixed in just like that we're going to put it in and chill it for a couple of hours that'll make it easier to mmm I can smell that that is lovely. Almost a cake batter. You're supposed to chill it and make it easier to form. And that's fine. We just have to put it in the fridge look at that isn't that lovely I'm gonna taste it mmm ooh that's yummy all right we're gonna scrape off our spoon and put that in the refrigerator Ready for us to put 
put in the bake in, into the oven. So what we're gonna do, because I want them to look like little hedgehogs in the end, we're not gonna roll them. In, I mean, we'll roll them into a ball, but we're gonna stick them in to these little silicon baking molds that look like little eggs, and that way they'll form into that shape. Um, and then we'll put in the uh, um, almonds after uh, they're baked because they should be nice and soft. So, let's preheat our oven to, let's see, 375. And we can put our, um, our dough in the mold as we wait for it to heat up. Now I'm going to put my uh, baking molds on a uh, cookie sheet. One, it helps to support them because they are so floppy. Now, in medieval times, they probably would have taken large spoons about this size and baked using them. Um, but we're not going to do that because I don't know what what those spoons, what heat temperature that those spoons are rated to. Now if I was using silver or something like that, that might be something different. All right, now make sure your hands are washed. I've already done that. Roll up your sleeves and you want your dough kind of firm so you can roll it into a little ball. So you want to roll it into a ball just like that and we're just going to stick it in the cookie mold or these will make a lovely sweet treat for the fairy queen oh where's little foxo you ask He's taking a nap. That track from Tierna Nog must have worn him completely out, especially with uh, getting dumped in the mud. Poor thing. Now we're gonna bake these, since these are so thick, we're gonna bake them for about 10 minutes and then we'll check them and make sure that they're nice and firm. You see what I'm doing here? I'm rolling it into a ball. I love ginger cookies. They're so yummy. Put a little bit more. Well, this will be good, good enough for the first batch. We'll see how those turn out. All right, it's time for us to put these in the oven. Now we're gonna bake them at 375 for about 10 minutes and then we'll see how they're doing. is almost up. Hopefully they turned out the way I wanted them to. Well, 
they kind of look eggish. Well, we'll let them cool for a little bit before we turn them out. And since I forgot to spray them, or butter them, or flour them, yeah, we might have a tough time getting them out. We'll see. You want to let them cool for about 10 minutes. And uh, then turn them out to cool. And that would, at which point we can start decorating. Now, if you're wanting to dip them in um, chocolate or anything like that, they have to be completely cool. Otherwise, your chocolate's just going to melt right off. Alright, now that they've cooled a little bit, we can try and flip them out. Ooh, well... Not quite what I was looking for. But, oh well, sometimes Should have left them in there for a little bit longer. But we can try. Some of them don't look too bad. We can try with the other ones, that last batch that I had, and see what comes of that. So we'll try leaving them in there for, oh, probably about say 12 minutes and see if that works. Now some of these I can certainly decorate. They're just not going to be as polished. So you want to take some of your flaked almonds, or however you want to do this, and this back half, you're going to create little spines. Just like that. See how it looks kind of like a hedgehog? Just like that. We can decorate the others later. And then you need three whole cloves. Two for the eyes and one for the nose. Your cloves look like this. They're a little berry. That's where the spice is, right there. Just like that. 
kind of cool, huh? What? And we'll take this little clove cookie and put it on our tray, our plate for the fairy queen. These others aren't so bad. We can totally eat them. That one doesn't look too terrible. Some of them are still a little bit raw, but that's okay. What I'll probably do is stick these back in the oven for later. These are a nice festive treat for any holiday party. I know there's so many coming. I will warn you, however, always take these out before you eat them. There we go. Another little hedgehog for our tray. All right, we'll put those back in the oven. Little fox, so it looks like you're up from your nap. Hello. Are you all nice and dry now? That's good. We're about ready to go visit the Vern Queen and take you home. Just a couple more things to do, and we'll be ready to go.